everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back again with even more wrestling figures. This week, we're taking a look at Series 3 of AEW Unrivaled Figures by Jazzwares. So far, Jazzwares has served up two great series of 6-inch scale figures based on the stars of All Elite Wrestling. Series 1 was pretty awesome and it's still difficult, if not impossible, to find at retail, with Series 2 being just as scarce. Series 3 feels like it's been just as hard to come by. Even with pre-ordering right away, I was only able to get 5 of the 6 figures, having to pay twice the retail price to a scalper, I mean Walmart.com, in order to get all 6 main figures in the series. Series 3 brings 6 more figures to the line. But I've already got a pretty big gripe, as two of these figures are of wrestlers we already got in Series 1. That's not even counting the special packs and one in whatever chase figures and the alternate Kenny Omega that comes with the ring. AEW has a huge roster, and we only get six figures per series. Would it be too much to ask to wait a few more series before going into repeats in the main line? Anyway, Number 19 in the line is Pac, or Pac, Pac? Well, when I first saw him, he was Pac. Then Aaron Neville, no, Adrian Neville. Anyway, he packed his bags and came to AEW as the Bastard Pac. And this figure is pretty cool. He comes with a second head and is molded after his appearance at All Out on August 31st, 2019, where he took the victory over Kenny Omega. Next is the inaugural AEW Women's World Champion, Riho. Packaged with the AEW Women's World title belt and count them, three pairs of hands. Riho bears a great resemblance to her real-life counterpart and is based on her appearance at the very first episode of AEW Dynamite on TNT from October 2nd, 2019, where she defeated Nyla Rose to become the very first AEW Women's World Champion. Next, making his debut in action figure form, is the incomparable Orange Cassidy. If you've never seen Orange in action before, it's hard to describe. The extremely laid-back Cassidy comes with his entrance gear, cloth t-shirt and jacket, sunglasses, and three sets of hands. And in what has to be a first, his pants are designed specifically for the purpose of putting his hands in his pockets. The figure is based on his appearance on AEW Dynamite from June 24, 2020, in which he had a brawl with Chris Jericho, leading to their match the following week. Cassidy can be a divisive wrestler, but you have to admit, Jazzwares did a fantastic job with this figure. Number 22 in the line is Darby Allin. Another very unique wrestler, Allin comes with his entrance gear jacket, necklace, and his skateboard that really rolls. Lots of great detail on this figure. His face, paint, and tattoos look just like they do in real life. Darby is based on his appearance at Fighter Fest 2019, where he wrestled Cody to a time limit draw. Finally, we have the Young Bucks. And even though we've already got a pair of Bucks in the line, these figures are pretty great. The Bucks come with their entrance gear and are adorned with cloth tasseled flares on their tights. I've got to admit they look pretty cool. Matt and Nick's look are based on their appearance on AEW Dynamite from January 29th, 2020 in their victory over Butcher and the Blade. I still have the same issue as before with the packaging, as it looks like a reusable collector's box, but in reality must be destroyed in order to be opened. I know that things like this take time to be changed, and that the packaging for these figures is planned out way in advance. I do hope, however, that this is remedied in future series. I got all six of these figures in the line, so let's take a look at Series 3 of AEW Unrivaled by Jazzwares. Alright, so let's take a look at Pac, uh, or Pac, or whatever you'd like to call him. Um, here he is. Here is the, the Pac figure that I paid um, a way too much for off a of scalper, uh, actually Walmart.com um, from one of the third-party sellers. Got this for 40 bucks, so twice the amount of retail. Had I just waited, I could have actually got it again on ringsidecollectibles.com. They've actually been um, keeping up 
um, with these these figures pretty well. So um, if you if you are looking for these, don't lose hope. You can still find them um, if you just wait around a little while. Ringside um, will have your back. But let's take a look at this figure here. Um, it's Pac, dude. Like, he looks great. He's got his beard. He's got his long hair. He's got his trunks. He has a very sort of plain look, but this is how he looks in real life. Um, the It's a, you know, nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it here. Um, and because he's got the trunks on, the, uh, the flesh-colored ball joints don't really don't really hurt um, on these. Um, but there aren't so many of these guys just wearing little trunks. Um, a lot of them got the pants on, but uh, maybe we'll see later on. Maybe they fixed it. Who knows? Um, but but for right now, we're looking at Pac. Uh, he comes with an extra head. Um, this one's actually pretty cool. It's got all the hair in his face, and it's uh, it's a pretty cool, awesome, evil look that he has on his face. Pretty goddamn cool. He also comes with this chair, a steel chair, and it folds. You can fold it out. It's really solid. Pretty cool shit. You can have them sit on it. You can break it apart and put it back together. Pretty cool, neat little thing to, to come with. Um, I don't know why he, he necessarily came with the chair, but you know it's nice to have a couple little accessories here and there. Um, but that's Pac. He's, he's got all the uh, articulation and everything you could want out of it, all the points of articulation. He's in great scale and looks awesome. Okay, and next is the inaugural AEW Women's Champion, Riho. Um, she comes with the AEW Women's World Title. Pretty cool. It comes with the belt. Um, the belt is the same as before, kind of like a soft plastic. This one's actually a little harder on the strap, so it makes it easier to connect in the back. So little improvements there. Also, Riho has little uh, spankies or trunks on, um, so the, uh, the nude ball joint don't really make a whole lot of difference as far as uh, they don't make it any worse. And uh, look, it looks like a good resemblance. Rash Holly doesn't like it uh, for some reason. Um, I don't know. I think she looks fine. She looks like how she looks in real life. Um, there's, no, I don't think there's anything wrong with the sculpt here. I think this looks a whole hell of a lot better than a lot of the real scan and stuff that gets done out there. Um, lots of cool detail on the costume. Lots of little extra pieces, like the little uh, tassel-y thing here on the shoulder. Um, the skirt is, a, is an extra loose piece. Um, uh, the knee pads um, that are part of the boots here, um, they used knee pads and, and, uh, and printed the, the boot uh, on there. So it looks like, you know, looks exactly like what she wears in the ring. Has the strap going up the one arm and these, these little wristband things that you can actually take off because you can. she comes with many hands, many hands. She has splayed hands, grabbing hands, fisty hands, um, any kind of hands you would want, lots of hands, and uh, not to mention, hey, look, the uh, the women's world title. So add those belts up. We got another, another championship belt uh, to go with our AEW figures and our second, uh, our second female competitor um, that we have. Hopefully we get some more as uh, as we go through the next couple series here. I don't think um, in the near future they've announced any, but I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see some soon. But uh, for now, that's Riho and she's awesome. All right, next up is Orange Cassidy. And as far as unique figures, as far as great looking sculpts, as far as great accessories and um, action features, I guess you could call it, um, look at Orange Cassidy here. It comes with the uh, the, the jacket. Um, it, you know, it has the look of the denim jacket that he has on. He has his jeans and uh, if you notice here, he can put his hands into his pockets like he does in real life. He's got the little sunglasses. You can remove those and uh, you can also remove this shirt. They, they actually have a really cool way of setting this up here. They have the t-shirt the underneath and you think it might be a separate piece. It's actually part of the same thing. It's just Velcroed to that. So you can take the whole thing off um, and uh, it's a lot easier. So I was thinking, oh man, it's gonna be really difficult to take that off. Um, but I mean, putting it back on, easy peasy. It's just a little jacket uh, with a little flap there, and it has the the print of the uh, of his T-shirt there. And he comes with uh, extra hands, so he's not just uh, doing the uh, the the robot. Um, he, although he can do the robot if you want him to, um, he can throw chops uh, like that 
if you want to. <laughs> uh, he also has the, uh, the the lazy thumbs up. He also has uh, you know a grabbing hand um, or two, and so he comes with lots of hands too. Comes with his sunglasses. Um, has that uh, a great looking sculpt as well. Not a bad looking figure. Uh, an awesome rookie figure. Another rookie figure uh, in this series here for uh, another guy that hasn't had. Uh, any figures at all ever before. Uh, this is very first action figure, Orange Cassidy. Um, I, I like how they've been able to recreate this and another bonus on this because he has these little rubber shorts on over the over the legs. Hey, look at that. Uh, no, no uh, discernible ball joints on the crotch and uh, it hasn't really affected his mobility. You can still do all the posing and everything you'd like to do. Um, therein. So that's Orange Cassidy and I'm glad he's in my collection. All right, and speaking of rookie figures, yet another rookie figure in this series. It's Darby Allen um, with all of the great detail on this. He has the jacket, he has the little chain necklace, of course his face paint and tattoos. Um, again, another great first figure and uh, the great looking gear he's got his boots on and he also comes with a skateboard um, I was hoping the skateboard might have a peg on it um, but that's all right it's it looks I guess looks more realistic with the grip tape or whatever on it and the wheels actually roll so I mean you could use it like a tech deck if you wanted to uh, has the uh, the Darby Allen logo uh, on there, scrawled on the on the skateboard, and it looks like it's been weathered and used and, and shoot up on the ends, like he's been actually been using it. Um, pretty cool, actual, pretty cool accessory. It might be the first wrestling figure to come with a skateboard, um, as far as I know. Maybe I don't know if this is a first. Um, I think it is, honestly. As far as I know, this is the first pro wrestling figure to come with a skateboard, um, and uh, not the first pro wrestler to, to have a skateboard. Um, as part of their entrance, um, if you can if you can name that guy or guys, um, extra points for you. Uh, and so, I love the I love the the face paint. I love the detail um, down to his his uh, his blue eyes and a great looking sculpt. Looks just like him. Uh, fantastic, fantastic job that Jazzwares did on these figures. Uh, now for the moment of truth, let's take a look. Look at this! They fixed the problem with the ball joints. The ball joints are now the same color as his gear. So they gave him gray ball joints. No more naked balls on these figures. So congratulations, Jazzwares. The one big gripe that I had with these figures, uh, besides the packaging, um, was the nude ball joints, and that was fixed. So. As far as I'm concerned, these are great, great figures, and for 20 bucks, and trust me, they are 20 bucks. You can find them. You can find them on ringsidecollectibles.com. Uh, they keep them in stock. Um, when they run out, they just put them up for pre-order again, and uh, so anybody can get these. They aren't gonna. The, you aren't gonna have to slit an old lady's throat. Um, like you will with the Masters of the Universe or the fucking G.I. Joes. Um, with these, anybody can get them, and they're really fucking cool. All right, and finally, it is Nick and Matt, the Young Bucks, um, right here in their uh, blue and gold uh, elite gear. Uh, in the next series, there's a Kenny Omega that has the blue and gold elite gear that kind of goes with these. So that's pretty cool. I do like how they do use the uh, actual gear from specific, like, citing the dates and times and places that they wore them. Um, yeah, they look like uh, Nick looks great. Matt, on the other hand, um, what is it with Matt? Does Jazzwares have a problem with with, with Matt <laughs> with Matt Jackson? Um, his sculpts have looked odd um, so far. Uh, this is the second Matt Jackson we've got so far, and this one also eyes look a little weird. They 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 tried to put some shading underneath and made him look like a fucking drug addict or something. <laughs> he looks he looks really strange, honestly. Um, not terrible though, because uh, when it comes down to it, like look at the tassels, the tassels on the on the gear. Um, these ones are made out of rubber here on the uh, on the on the vest, which you can remove if you want to. Say the elite across the back. 
uh, same thing with Nick. Basically, they have pretty much the same body, uh, both of these guys do. I think they do. I don't know if they made one taller than the other. Um, I don't know if one is taller than the other. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, they pretty much have the same gear or whatever, for the exception of the heads um, and the hands. Um, the, and Matt's got the, the taped up right right hand, but they're pretty much got a couple grabby hands. And, uh, and yeah, they're pretty much the same exact figure uh, with the exception of those two things. Um, but yet another, another uh, uh, set of young bucks you get. And in, in this, uh, the hits are just going to keep on coming as uh, we're going to get a couple more repeats as the line goes on. But at the end of the day, it was cool to get another set of young bucks. And maybe if you're looking for these things in the store um, and you didn't catch them around the first time, here's another pair of young bucks for you. All right, so at the end of the day, Series 3, uh, gonna be a little bit easier to find online, gonna be a little bit, maybe, hopefully, a little bit easier to find in the stores. Um, another great series. It seems like they're making improvements constantly. Uh, we did fix the problem with the ball joints, finally. And, uh, and so onward and upward with the AEW figures, looking forward to the next series of these. Um, but for now, what, what, I, what I always got to say is, it, is it worth the money? Yes, for $20, you are not going to find better wrestling figures at that $20 price point when it comes to detail, when it comes to accessories, when it comes to all those extra heads and hands and stuff that they get. Yes, the, uh, the Mattel Ultimates or whatever, the Super 7 Ultimates. Um, you're talking about $30 figures. You're talking about $50 figures. Yeah, for $30, for $50, they better be better than these figures. But for $20 a pop, not bad at all.